great NFL week eight. I've had a few bad weeks. I know no excuses though going forward. Atlanta opens up the Thursday nighter in Carolina. The Falcons one and a half point road underdogs. The Falcons are 2-5 against spread, 0-5 oh, against the spread on grass. They are 1-6 straight up in their last seven games, 6-1 against the spread on the road. 5-2 straight up and 6-1 against spread as road underdogs is Atlanta. They're 8-2 straight up versus Carolina, 8-2 against spread versus Carolina. Carolina won 23-16 in Atlanta in week 5. That was Quinn's last game as coach for the Falcons. The under is 6-1 in Carolina versus Atlanta. Home team is 11-5 against the spread in this head-to-head -head matchup. The under is 11-3-1 when these two teams face off in the last 15 games. Carolina, they're 4-1 against spread, 1-6 straight up in their last 7 games. I like the Panthers to win and cover the spread. I will go with the trend that the home team is 11-5 against spread first and take the Panthers even though McCaffrey won't be in the lineup tonight. Next game, Indy. Two and a half point road favorites against Detroit. Colts are four and two. The Lions are three and three. I don't know how. Oh, wait a minute. They beat the Cards, which was a good win, actually. The Falcons and the Jags, though. I, I really don't trust Detroit. I don't know how they got three fucking wins, but that's three losses on my uh, record for doing this because I bet against them all the time. Nothing I don't think will change this week. The Colts are four and one straight up, one and seven straight up on the road, but five and one straight up in Detroit. Four and one straight up versus Detroit. The road team is four and all against spread in this head to head. The over is eight and one in the Lions' last nine home games. That's something to look for. And the over is also three, one and one in the head to head matchup. Detroit, they're five and twelve against spread, three and twelve straight up, zero oh and six straight up at home, three and ten against the spread at home. 0-7 straight up as a home underdog. Lions have been home underdogs in 12 of their last 14 home games, and they have a 5-9 against the spread record. I am on the Colts, and I think they are the better team on both sides of the ball. Matthew Stafford, yeah, he can be nice, but I don't think it amounts to wins. If you actually look at the passing leaders, I believe three of the top five passing leaders so far this year in yards uh, probably are on teams with losing records. Uh, it, Prior to Dak Prescott going out, I, I know for sure that I, I think it was four out of the five top quarterbacks in passing yards were on losing teams. So take that for what you will. I'm sure that's changed the last couple of weeks with the way Brady and Rodgers have gone off. I like Indy to win and cover this game. Moving on, Rams at Miami. Dolphins, three and a half point home underdogs. The Rams, they're six and two straight up, 10 and four against the spread on the road. Three and six against the spread versus Miami. One and 10 straight up versus Miami. 0-5 straight up in Miami. What goes on with the Rams when they travel east to Florida? The underdog is 4-0 against the spread in the head-to-head. -head. Tua gets his first career NFL start. This is why I'm going to pick the Miami Dolphins to win and cover this game. I'll read you the rest of the stats in a second here. But Tua, this kid, it's been exciting. I, I've just been waiting for this kid to fucking play a game and tell you the truth. I think Miami has been doing well recently. 4-1 against spread. 4-1 against spread at home. 6-1 straight up versus the Rams. 4-3 against the spread versus the Rams. 6-1 against spread on grass, which is where they play. 5-0 against spread following a bye week, which they just had. I just can't get over the hype of Tua. If I'm wrong on this, so be it. If you guys have a gut feeling, like I always said, I'm giving you stats and numbers. You guys got to decide who the fuck you want to take, who you like in the games, because... I'm not always going to follow some of my numbers that you guys has realized because I stick with my gut sometimes. Sometimes it'll burn me, but I like to rely on it most of the time. So you got to stick with what you believe in on these games. Here are some. So here are just the numbers from me. And I get all my numbers from Bet365. If Bet365 doesn't have something, I'll go on five or six of the different Vegas sites and I'll. I'll take the average of what the spreads are. There, there was one game. What was the game this week? Uh, Tampa Bay, the Giants. I didn't have a spread on Bet365 when I did all my uh, points writing down the games and whatnot for you guys today. So I went on and I saw spreads anywhere from 9 to 12. So I went with the average of 10 and a half. There was, I, I think 10 and a half had the most and it kind of fell right in the middle of those numbers. So that is how I decided my Tampa Giants spread. That game will be last on the docket today. Next up, Las Vegas in Cleveland. The Browns five and two all of a sudden, good for them. OBJ though, bad news, done for the year. That knee injury last week. 
I don't know. What can Cleveland do without him is the question to me. Vegas. They did not look good at all last week. Cleveland at least got the win. Although it was over Cincy. So what's going to happen? 4 and 8. The Raiders straight up. 4 and 1 against spread on the road. 5 and 17 straight up on the road. 2 7 and 1 against spread versus Cleveland. Over has cashed in 5 of 6 Raiders games so far. The over is 7 and 0 when the Browns are favored. 5 and 0 is the over when Cleveland is a home favorite. Cleveland, they're 3 and 7 against spread, 5 and 1 straight up, 7 and 1 straight up at home, 7 and 3 against spread versus the Raiders. Fave is 5 and 1 against spread in this series. I don't know. I, I'm all. See, I want to pick the Browns, but how much is OBJ going to affect them, or will it at all? Because they still got a good ground game, although they have a big list of questionables on the injury report. You know what? I'm, I'm going to take. I haven't decided on this one yet until I was doing it. I'm going to take the Raiders to win and cover this game. I think they'll do it. I think the OBJ factor could come in big at the end of the game. I think Josh Jacobs might be able to take advantage on the ground where he was totally shut down by the Tampa defense early. And then Brady got Tampa the lead. So he was kind of irrelevant after that because the Raiders were forced to pass the rest of the game. I will take the Raiders to bounce back. Cleveland, a little bit of a slip here. I don't think they're necessarily the worst team in this. I just think this is a good situation for the Raiders to take advantage of. Next, Minnesota, plus seven on the road in Green Bay. The Packers are five and one against spread. 11 and two straight up in their last 13. Eight and oh straight up at home. They're four and oh against spread as a home favorite. Minnesota, they're 3 and 12 straight up as an underdog. They're 1 and 4 against spread versus Green Bay. They're 3 and 8 against the spread in Green Bay. Green Bay won 43 34 in week one. The under is 9 and 3 in this head to head. A bit surprising to me when I seen that. But when I look back, a lot of these games seem to be like that 21 20 sort of shit in the end where it comes down to that divisional rivalry. I am going to roll with Green Bay, though, and I will take the seven points, and I will go with the favorites, and I will take Green Bay to win and cover. Next up, New England struggling. Couple losses in a row. Bills shut the Jets down in the second half. That first half was looking a little sloppy, but then they came down and allowed no points in the second half on their way to a victory. The Bills are 5 and 2. The under has cashed in four of six Pats games so far. Pats D has been gashed by the running pass all year. The Bills, though, they're 3 and 7 against spread 5 and 2 straight up. The road team is 28 and 2 against the spread in this head to head matchup. New England, they're 2 and 4 against spread, 2 and 4 against spread on the road. 8 0 straight up in Buffalo, but that's a lot of Brady nonsense. They're also 9 and 1 straight up in Buffalo, but once again, that's the Brady Belichick duel. That is not happening now. And Cam Newton might be getting the blame. But like I said, the New England D has been getting gashed in and out. Newton had the COVID. He's been sloppy. Yes. I, I think the Bills can take advantage of this. And I think they will win and cover this game. New York Jets on the road in Kansas City to face the defending champs. 19 and a half point home favorites are the Chiefs in this game. But here's some crazy numbers when I was going over this matchup. Sure, the Jets are 1-6 and six against spread. They're 0-7 on the year. Chiefs, they're 5-2 and two against the spread and 6-1 and one on the year. Jets, they average 12 points a game. The de defense, after allowing 30 or more points in each of their first five games, the last two games, they've held their opponents to under 21 points. Step in the right direction for the Jets. Will it be enough? They're 2-6 against spread versus Kansas City. 4-2 straight up versus Kansas City. And they're 6-4 straight up versus Kansas City. 4-6 against spread versus Kansas City in the last 10. Like, I, I don't know what to make of this. The Chiefs, they're 4-1 they're against spread at home to New York. 9-1 against spread at home overall. 19 points, though. Like, man... 19 points. I don't know how you can't take Kansas City to win this game. But I, I, I don't know how you can really go 20 points. I, I'll take New York against the spread. And I will take Kansas City to win the, win the game. That's too many points for me. I, I think the Jets have shown enough that to get blown out like they were early in the year. I, I just don't see it happening. You guys can tell I'm fighting with this one a little bit as well. Just like that Cleveland uh, Raiders game. But anyways, Kansas City to win the Jets to cover the spread. I'm sticking with it. 
Pittsburgh in Baltimore. This is the game of the week right here, in my opinion. Two good teams, 6-0, 5-1. Baltimore, four-point home faves. Pittsburgh's 8-2 against the spread as a road dog. 5-1 against the spread in their last six. 3-7-1 against the spread versus Baltimore, though. The under is 5-1 versus in Baltimore. The road team is 5-2 against the spread in the head-to-head. -head. The underdog is 18-7-3 against the spread versus each other. The Ravens are 6-4 straight up versus Pittsburgh. 6-2-2 against spread versus Pitt. 12-4-1 against spread. 17-2 straight up. They are a perfect 5-0 against the spread versus the AFC North. This game has all the makings for a tight finish similar to the Tennessee Pitt game last week. I think Pitt ends up on the wrong side of the three-point game this week. I'll take Baltimore to win and Pittsburgh to cover the spread. Tennessee at Cincinnati. And all week, I, I might change that on Sunday to Baltimore to win and cover. But right now, I like that as a field goal game until I do a bit more research on them. Next game, Tennessee in Cincinnati. The Titans are five and a half point road favorites. They're five and one. Cincinnati one five and one on the year. Tennessee two and four against spread. Seven and one straight up on the road. One five against spread in Cincinnati. Eleven five straight up versus Cincinnati. The over is cashed in four of six Titans games. Under is four and one versus each other when the Titans and Bengals match up. The under is five and one in Cincy versus Tennessee. Road team is seven and three against the spread versus each other. Five and two against spread are the Bengals. Burrow being sacked a league high 28 times. Protect your fucking quarterback. I think that'll be the big issue combined with Derrick Henry just going off against the Bengals run D. I like Tennessee to win and cover that five and a half points this week. The Chargers, they're in Denver to face the Broncos. LA, they are 5-1 against spread, 1-4 straight up, 3-7 straight up versus Denver, 4-5-1 against spread versus Denver, 4-14 straight up versus Denver, 1-6 straight up in Denver, 9-3-5 against the spread in Denver. The underdog is 4-1-1 against spread in the head-to-head -head matchup. The road team is 13-5-2 against spread versus each other. The over is 5-1 in the last six when these two teams have met. The Broncos are 4-2 against spread, 12-6 against spread in their last 18 games. The Broncos just held Kansas City to 286 total yards, and they held the Chiefs to 0-8 on third downs last week. Even though they did lose the game, that was a lot on the turnovers and the lack of offensive ability. I don't think the Broncos have that problem with the Chargers here this week. I will take Denver to not only cover the three-point dog, but to win the game outright. Next up, New Orleans, four and a half point road favorites in Chicago. Four and two versus five and two. Five and two is the home Bears. They are six and 13 against spread. Six and two straight up in their last eight. New Orleans, they're two and four against spread. Eight and one against spread on the road. 14 and six against the spread versus NFC North opponents. Four and one against spread versus Chicago. The over has cashed in in all six Saints games so far. Might be the smartest play of the day right there. Is Thomas trying to work his way out of New Orleans? I'm really starting to hear a lot more rumors swirling that Thomas might be trying to work a trade out. Now, I don't see that happening this season, but in the offseason, don't be surprised if Thomas is no longer with the Saints. I don't know if this is going to be locker room trouble, but he's already been suspended by the Team 1 game this year. I don't know what is going on there. I think that Chicago will cover the spread and New Orleans will win the game. San Fran plus three on the road in Seattle. The Seahawks five and one. The 49ers, they're seven and zero oh against spread on turf. Seven and one against spread as an underdog. They're six and one against spread on the road. They are four and 14 against spread versus Seattle though. Two and 11 straight up versus Seattle. One and eight straight up in Seattle. Two six and one against the spread in Seattle. 4-12 and 1 against the spread versus Seattle in the last 17. The Seahawks, they're 8 and 2 straight up versus San Fran. 0 and 4 against spread versus the NFC West, though. Seattle's D has given up a record 2,875 fucking yards in six goddamn games this year. That is a record. Even the Dolphins' bad D, the Cowboys' bad D, the Jets' bad D over the last few years didn't give up that many fucking yards through six games. That is ridiculous. That is how Arizona was able to come back 
and stop Russell Wilson from being able to pull that game out of his ass against them last week. However, I do think Russell Wilson will have a field day with Lockett and Metcalf and the rest of the boys on the Seahawks offense, and they will put San Fran away. I think that they can win and cover the three-point spread. Don't be surprised if it's a push, though, as much as I just talked up Seattle. Dallas in Philly. Wow. 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 What a shitty fucking game this will be. And it's the fucking Sunday Nighter. How has this game not been flexed out for Baltimore and fucking Pittsburgh? That is a goddamn joke. There's no way you should have a 2-5 and five team facing off a 2-4-1 and four and one team on the fucking primetime game on Sunday Night Football. It's my favorite fucking team. I don't give a shit. They don't deserve to be the Sunday Nighter. This game should be flexed to Baltimore and... Baltimore and Pittsburgh, in my opinion. Anyways, that's my rant about the Sunday Nighter. Dallas, they're 0-6 against spread, 6-4 and four straight up and against spread versus Philadelphia. 0-5 against the spread on the road. The fave is 7-2 against the spread in this head-to-head -head matchup, however. Philly is 2-5 against spread, but they're 5-1 straight up versus the NFC East. And that seems to be the only teams that Philly might beat this year. Which is a good thing because it'll give them the division and an undeserving playoff spot with a shitty ass record. But so be it. That's what it is this year, I guess. We have had bad teams. What was Seattle? 7 and 9 won the division one year. So if you can push to that, at least you won't be the worst team in history to win a division. You'll be tied. <laughs> Anyways, the Eagles. Dak Prescott gone. Dalton's a question mark. The Cowboys could be down to their third string fucking quarterback. I don't even know the kid's fucking name to tell you the truth. I didn't think I'd have to fucking research the third string quarterback for the fucking Cowboys this year. I never, the thought never even crossed my fucking mind. So I can't even tell you the kid's name. And for that reason, I'm going to take the Eagles to win and cover. That is the only logic when these two teams are facing each other. I don't care who you're a fan of. I've got a lot of friends who are Cowboys fans and we just sit there and look at each other and laugh like, how the fuck can either of our teams fucking win this game? We actually fight with each other about whose team's going to blow it and fucking lose the game so the other person's team can win the game. That's how bad these two teams have been. I So I have no logic. I, I'll roll with Philly and the nine points just because Dallas, they're probably going to be down to a third string quarterback and all the other issues going on. Their porous defense. Once might actually be able to do something for a game. We will find out. Tampa Bay at the Giants. That's your Monday nighter. This is going to be a shocker for you guys. Tampa, the Bucks, 10 and a half point favorites. They are Two and eight straight up versus the New York Giants. Two, seven, and one against the spread versus the G-Man. One and eight straight up in New York when they face the Giants. The over is five and oh in the head-to-head -head matchup. The underdog is three, one, and one against the spread versus each other. The G-Man, they are four and two against the spread. They are one and seven straight up. They are one and eight against the spread at home. Four and one against the spread as underdogs. What the Giants have traditionally done to Brady over the years, and to see the trends with what the Giants have done to the Bucks over the years, I am picking this as my upset special of the week on both the point spread and the straight up win. I think the Giants win and cover this game. They'll win it by a point and there'll be some stupid fucking reason that they do because they have no business even competing with Tampa. Just... One of those days it's going to be, in my opinion. I will take the G-Men to win and cover the spread. That's my Week 8 NFL 2020 football picks. Peace.